Welcome, folks, to the latest installment of Sports with Joe and Ish. I'm the sports editor of the San Marcos Daily Record, Joe Bazzelli, and I'm here with my assistant, Ishmael Johnson. And Ish, of course, we find out the news earlier today that Texas State won't be going to a bowl game. Um, after the Sun Belt had, the, all three of those times had been used up by UL Lafayette, Arkansas State, as well as South Alabama. We knew they were going to need an at-large bid, and they were in the race, it seemed like, for the Armed Forces and a couple of other bowls, but some scenarios didn't go well for them yesterday, and that ultimately probably lead, led to them being shut out. Particularly uh, Oklahoma losing to Oklahoma State, and really kind of a, that was, that was supposed to be the guarantee as like the scenarios that needed to happen. They needed Oklahoma to win and Boise State to win, and if anything, everybody looked at Oklahoma and was like, all right, we can get the Oklahoma out of the way, then we'll have to wait till the last game to see where everything goes. Well, Oklahoma fell, and in kind of an interesting fashion, like the last couple minutes just kind of unraveled against Oklahoma State. That put them in a at-large bid scenario, because, and then they had to wait till Boise State, the Boise State game, to see officially if they would have any chance. Boise State ended up winning, but uh, I think that Oklahoma loss was just kind of like the I think it was kind of like, you know, things were on the edge there. People were like, okay, it's probably not going to happen. Um, but today, obviously, we got the final news. They were still down to the wire with the Armed Forces Bowl a little bit, but um, people kind of saw the writing on the wall with the Oklahoma loss yesterday. That really caused some, you know, at the end of the day, there were 81 bowl eligible teams, 76 slots. But like we kind of been talking about last week, they really needed Oklahoma State not to get that to get that tie-in that would have freed up one slot in the Big 12. Yeah. And really that domino effect had sort of led to Pitt getting uh, the Armed Forces Bowl over Texas State. Um, and, and really, I think ish, we can all trace it back, though, to that loss to South Alabama. That was a game that they knew going into it. Uh, that might have been for a bowl game later down the road. Turned out to be probably the difference between them getting the Chameleon Bowl and not getting the Chameleon Bowl, speaking of Texas State, but that was a game that they really had every chance to win yeah. uh, three or four times set up in their own territory in South Alabama territory after turnovers, and they weren't able to convert those into touchdowns and end up turning into a 24-20 or 20 loss. And Yes, they came back the last two weeks and played strong to make a, a, a case for an at-large bid, but that probably is where their, their bowl chances were, were really put on ice. Yeah, I think that bowl, not only the Camellia Bowl, but the Go Daddy Bowl as well, because if they continue on that same track, you know, they knock off Arkansas State, they get that second slot. Um, and, yeah, you know, that, that loss, at the time you looked at that loss, you're like, wow, that's probably going to do it. And then they beat Arkansas State, and it's like, oh, maybe that didn't do it. But in the end, you know, if you look at the season, if they finish 8-4, and four, you know, they are, it should, it's worth mentioning, they are the only team above 500 that didn't make a bowl. Every other team is 6-6. Six and six. And so if they get an 8-4, and four, there's no way a bowl doesn't take a chance on Texas State. Even if they don't get a Sun Belt Bowl, there's no way uh, an at-large bowl some, a slot somewhere doesn't say, you know what, we'll take the 8-4 and four Texas State team. Uh, there's no way they get left out if they have that eighth win. And like you said, that South Alabama game just kind of, I don't want to say, was the death knell, but it was just kind of like, all right, this is going to be a really, really uphill climb um, towards the end of this season. Yeah, and it makes sense why the Camellia Bowl would take. I know there's a lot of people that are really disappointed with the fact that they didn't end up in a Sun Belt Bowl, but you have to understand the Camellia Bowl is it's a local market. They're yeah. only an hour away from South Alabama. They want to have a strong crowd for their first bowl game. Mm -hmm. They're not going to take an out-of-state team that – you know, quite frankly, has some attendance issues. Texas yeah. State has had attendance issues this year. Um, when they were on TV for that Arkansas State game on ESPNU, yeah. um, they, it was not a strong crowd. And I don't think that was the biggest mm -hmm. detriment to Texas State's resume, but it has to be, it has to be said that it was one of them yeah. uh, that contributed to that. Yeah, I know. I think one of the biggest misconceptions is that attendance was the thing. Like, people will look at the, the stadium and they're like, oh, man, if only we had more people. That's not necessarily, you know, an indication. If they have a sellout crowd every game, then, yeah, maybe that will boost them in. But even if they have, like, 80 to 90, like, that's not going to boost them over a school like Oklahoma State, who's an established program. And with a, when, you're, when you're not established as an FBS consistent bowl program, man, you have to get that eighth, ninth win to make your case to say, yes, this team's good enough, not just that they'll bring fans, but that they're good enough to be on television. Oklahoma State, even at six wins, you know, is still going to is still 
the more trustworthy, the safer pick, I should say, the safer pick in terms of sponsors saying they're going to bring fans, they're going to bring revenue, TV revenue, things like that. And uh, it was a factor. The attendance was a factor, but it wasn't the factor. The factor was the South Alabama loss, the fact that Oklahoma State was bowl eligible. Those things piled on. Yeah, I think you. the one surprise would maybe be that they took Pitt. The Armed Forces Bowl yeah. took Pitt. Yeah. Um, the fact of the matter is they're not great attendance-wise. Mm-hmm. And the, the thing is that's a huge, you know, that's a big travel for, for Pitt fans to yeah. go to that game, to go in Texas. I think that's why they kind of, Felt like maybe an interstate matchup between Houston and Texas State would be attractive, but ultimately, when you're talking about TV dollars, the fact that you have an ACC team uh, in your game going up against, you know, you have two Power Six conferences going up against each other, is ultimately more attractive than one Power Five conference going up against a, a Sun Belt team. Yeah, you look at, I mean, the sponsors; they don't necessarily know how good Texas State is. They haven't seen every game this season. But they know, oh, Pitt, I've heard of Pitt. Dan Marino went to Pitt. Like, things like that jump out when you talk about programs uh, that are just barely on the cusp. And, yeah, I think people are going to have an issue with, especially a lot of alumni are going to have an issue with Pitt going there because they probably they had a chance to get the in-state game, a game that's had history. You know, a couple years ago, Houston blew out Texas State. A couple years ago, Texas State beat upset Houston. So, like, that was going to be a storyline there. And, yeah, there's going to be some issues. But in the end, the sponsors, Pitt's a recognizable name. And that's that's the way it falls. I'm looking forward to, of course, next year Texas State will get their chance against Houston yeah. in the third game of the season. But they'll ultimately open the season up against Florida State on uh, September 5th in Tallahassee. Uh, of course, Florida State is in the, the final four teams of the playoffs, so we'll see if they have a chance to become the two-time defending national champions. That would be a quite, quite a matchup for Texas State. Yeah. But, you know, we'll look forward to that and continuing – throughout this week to provide coverage, of course, of Texas State, as well as San Marcos, as uh, both really the basketball teams get into the kick in the high gear over the next couple weeks. So continue to, to check back in at SanMarcusRecord.com for all the latest coverage. Uh, and for the latest installment of Sports with Joe and Ish, Joe and Ish were both signing off.